what is like the main role of that digestive system? We talked about this with the anatomy for AMP one. I think two word definition of its function: break down food, and that's it. Break down food. Okay. A lot of people think that it's all about absorption of nutrients. It is. Okay. Like that. That's really important. But that's like the easiest thing that the digestive system does. That process is really simple. When we absorb nutrients, all we're really doing is that we have these very valuable pieces of organic molecules like fatty acids or amino acids or monosaccharides. We'll have them on one side of the cell membrane to absorb them. We just need to move those little molecules to the other side. That's like the simplest part of you know, A and P1, like the chemistry section, is just transport across the cell membrane. That's really easy. We can do that with pumps or we can just let them diffuse across. So absorption is pretty easy. The hard part of the digestive system is this. So like when you take a big bite of a cheeseburger, you're eating these like gigantic organic molecules, these really large organic molecules. Things like really long starches, these polysaccharides, these really big proteins that make up the muscle tissue of the hamburger meat. Lipids, you know, these giant triglycerides that aren't like giant, but these large triglycerides that make up the, the, the fat. Those are too big for our body to absorb. What do you think we need to break those large organic molecules down to in order to absorb them. So in other words, like a starch, what do we need to break it down to in order to absorb it? What, like, think about like a starch, it's like a polysaccharide, it's like a really long you know, carbohydrate. What's the smallest carbohydrate we can have? A monosaccharide. So we have to break that large polysaccharide into a monosaccharide, then we can absorb it. What about like a big protein? What do you think we have to break proteins down to? Amino acids, individual amino acids. Okay, and, and that's a big deal because proteins sometimes are composed of hundreds of thousands of amino acids, you know? Um, what about um, fats? You know, triglycerides are big. What are triglycerides made up of? A glycerol and three fatty acids, right? So pieces of fatty acids. You gotta break them down into small pieces, then we can absorb them. That's the whole goal of the digestive system. It starts, that's why we have teeth, that's why we have salivary glands, that's why we have a stomach, that's why we even have a, like a pancreas and liver that secretes all these secretions that just chop things up into smaller and smaller pieces. And that's, that's kind of the whole point. Now, um, another thing that's interesting about the gut, about our digestive system, that is important to kind of think about is that if I were to draw, let's say I draw like a little box, and this box represents our body, okay? It's very simplified kind of sketch. Our digestive system exists as a tube that extends from one end of the body to the other, right? You know, it's basically like a little tube that goes from one end of the body to the other. And this tube has a name. The general name for this tube is the alimentary canal. Right, so that's the alimentary canal and everything else, this is like the body. Now what's, what's important about this is that if you look at it, because the tube extends from one end of the body to the other, like your mouth, your rear end, everything that's in this tube is really separate from the body cavity, you know? So you can almost think of everything that's in our gut as being outside the body. I mean, it goes through our body, but it's outside the body. And that's important because there's a lot of nasty things that go into our gut. You know, like we eat a lot of food that probably contains bacteria, maybe even viruses. We don't want that, you know, hanging out with our major organs like our heart and our lungs. You know, we want to keep those separate. And so we do that because it extends from one end to the other. Another important thing about this, um, this tube that extends from one end to the other is that it is composed of a couple of different layers that are continuous throughout. You know, whether you're talking about your stomach or your small intestine, it has a similar kind of composition. The innermost layer of this tube, so I'll draw them like right here, right? So the innermost, say this is the inner layer of the tube, the innermost layer of the tube is called the mucosa. And so what you can imagine is that 
everything inside, like that's the inside of the gut. You know what I mean? Like this little hole, that's what's inside of our esophagus, inside of our stomach, all those things. The innermost layer that wraps around that is called the mucosa. The mucosa is important because he contains a layer of epithelial cells that are columnar, okay? And these columnar epithelial cells, if you guys remember back to the connect to the tissues kind of lecture, what do you columnar epithelial cells like to do? Secrete and absorb. Secrete and absorb, and that's exactly what they do. They're gonna secrete things in the stomach, they're gonna absorb things in places like the um, small intestine, okay? The mucosa is also gonna have a little bit of loose areolar connective tissue wrapped around those epithelial cells, and that provides nutrition for you know, those um, epithelial cells and a little bit of muscle tissue, just a tiny little bit of muscle tissue, and that helps to kind of like maximize the absorption of those cells. But really the most important part of the mucosa are these columnar epithelial cells that secrete and absorb. Okay. The next layer that we'll uh, talk about is called the submucosa. And I'll draw this guy in um, like a green. So the submucosa wraps around him. Okay. And this submucosa is made up of loose areolar connective tissue. And so this submucosa is going to, going to contain a lot of blood vessels, so like arteries and veins. And you know, I could even draw these like arteries and veins like this. Imagine you have these like arteries and veins that are like going across, right, extending out all over the place. And so those arteries and veins, they have some important roles. They are gonna distribute the nutrients that the mucosa absorbs. So it's, we need arteries and veins to pick all those nutrients up. We also need arteries and veins that just provide nutrition to all the other cells of the digestive system, okay? You're also gonna have like, um, I don't know, I should, I should label it in black. You're also gonna have um, like immune cells that hang out in the submucosa. Now, wrapped around the mucosa, this is where we're gonna have a really important layer of muscle, and this is called the muscularis. So this is where we have a really important layer of muscle. So this muscularis, he's important. What do you think is contained inside the muscularis? Based on his name. Muscle. 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 This is where smooth muscle is located. What you're gonna find is that the inner kind of layers of the muscularis are gonna contain muscle fibers that wrap around the gut like this. All right, so they're gonna be these circumferential muscles that wrap around like that. When they contract, what happens to the size of the gut? Or the size of that tube? It squeezes the tube, they get smaller, okay? The second set of muscles are going to be muscles that run like this. They're going to be running lengthwise like that. Okay. Hopefully this is clear. I don't know if it is, but we're going to try it. So the second set of tubes or muscle fibers, they're going to run like that. And you're going to have all these little fibers that are running lengthwise. Is that kind of clear? Maybe. I don't know. Um, the purpose of these guys, when they contract, they are going to make the gut longer, like fat, <laughs> shorter, <laughs> so they squeeze it like this. Now this is what this uh, allows the gut to do. It allows the gut to execute some processes called peristalsis and segmentation. Peristalsis is the, the most important one. So peristalsis is the ability for the gut to move a piece of food or its contents from one end to the other. It's almost like um, squeezing toothpaste out of a toothpaste tube. You know, if you start at one end and you squeeze, the toothpaste goes this way, and then you squeeze, and you squeeze, and you squeeze, and it moves it along. Like, if the gut is a tube, and imagine this is like a little piece of food, if it wants to move it from, like, this direction to that direction, like, this, these circular fibers are going to contract, move it, and those circular fibers contract, move it, and then move it. And at the same time, right ahead of that piece of food, the longitudinal fibers are gonna contract, and that makes the gut fatter, so the food just moves into it, moves into it, moves into it. And, and, and that's a pretty you know, easy process. 
Now, um, the last kind of layer of the gut is called the serosa, and this is a layer of connective tissue that encases the gut, and what it does is that it wraps around the gut, and then it, um, it's like this really slimy membrane that wraps around the gut, and then anchors it to, or connects it to, the inside of the body cavity. So the serosa, imagine it's like this membrane that comes out, wraps around, and then just anchors it to the inside of the body wall. Right, kind of like that. And, and that's really what it looks like. If you were, anybody dissected a cat or any type of vertebrate in high school, remember to pull out the intestines that has this weird like film on it? That's what this serosa is. And it just anchors it to the body wall, okay? And that's his job. So that's the serosa. Let me finish it up. Okay, that's good enough. And inside the serosa, it's going to contain things like the major blood vessels. Remember the superior and the inferior mesenteric arteries and the veins and all those guys? Those guys are going to be located inside the serosa, and it gives them a pathway to the gut where it can, you know, innervate the gut. So let me label it as the serosa. Good. And so that's your basic kind of internal structure of the gut.